have a look at uh, the differences between electronic codebook, cipher blockchaining, cipher feedback and output feedback. Okay, so what we should see in this presentation is this method here really isn't very good at all when it comes to our cryptography and these methods provide a much better way of uh, actually creating our encryption. Okay, so just to recap, what we have is symmetric encryption. Symmetric encryption, we use the same key to encrypt as we do to decrypt. Okay, so typical ones here are RC2, RC4, DES, 3DES, AES. In this presentation, we'll have a look at 3DES and how that can uh, encrypt and decrypt. Then we have symmetric encryption. That's like a public key. So we have one key to encrypt. And then there is another key which will then decrypt. Also, we have one-way hashing, MD5, SHA1, SHA256. It should be possible to easily go one way, but not uh, the, the reverse back. And then, of course, we have encoding such as B64, HEX and OCTO. The three main methods that we have, so normally and symmetric encryption is used really as the workhorse of the industry. So you actually find that most of the cryptography that we see is actually symmetric encryption methods, typically AES, 3DES and, and so on. The way that we generate the key is we either have a password protected file and then that contains the, the key so that if we use the password it will open up the file and we can actually use the key to be able to encrypt. Another method is to take a password or a passphrase and then put that into a password generator and out will pop an encryption key. A third method here is where we use public key uh, or uh, asymmetric encryption to encrypt our key, typically when it's a session key. So we have our key in here, and then we use our public key to be able to encrypt the key. And only the private key can then actually decrypt to give us back the original key. Okay, so this is a quite a typical method that, that we use. Often we have a certificate stored on our device which has the public and the private key. Okay, so what are some of the methods that might be used in terms of uh, cracking uh, cryptography? So one is a known plain text attack, and with this, uh, the user, or in the intruder in this case, actually knows the mapping between a cipher and a certain piece of text that can then be used to decrypt the rest of the, the text by analyzing it. Then there is a replay. So it's possible in our cipher for Eve to capture the cipher text and then play it back. Okay, so if it, if, if uh, there is no way to actually check the updates or have a sequence, then Eve can basically just play the message back with the cipher and it'll still make sense. There's also uh, an active uh, attack and, a cut, and cut and paste. So it's possible that Eve can actually take bits of the cipher text and then paste them together to make some sense. We'll see that a little bit later when we look at our three DES encryption. Then there's a chosen cipher. In this case, uh, Alice, Eve sends Alice a message knowing what Alice will actually reply back. When Alice does reply back, then the cipher text is analyzed. There's also the exhaustive search. So this is brute force. So Eve can try all the possible keys that are there and then eventually she could find out the key that actually fits. And then finally we have man in the middle, or Eve in the middle. In this case, uh, Eve negotiates a key between Bob and Alice, between Bob and Eve, and then will negotiate a key between Eve and Alice. 
So it's encrypted with the first key, then decrypted, then re-encrypted uh, with the second key, which goes to Alice. As far as Bob and Alice are concerned, they're communicating with each other and they're using the same shared key. So let's have a look at the, the different methods that we have, electronic codebook uh, and so on. So with the electronic codebook what happens is we take our key and then we take a block at a time. So that block might be 64 bits for DES or 128 bits for AES. And then we'll cipher each block into an encrypted block. And then that's all sent to the other side. The problem with this though is the same block will obviously be encrypted in the same way. So it's possible for Eve to pick off certain messages, copy and paste and so on. So what we often do is add what's called an initialization vector and that adds salt to the uh, to the, the encryption process. We'll see that in a little minute. Okay, so this is electronic codebook. Cipher block chaining actually takes uh, our initialization vector and we exclusively OR it with the first block in there. Okay, so we take this 64-bit uh, uh, block here in the case of DES and we take an initialization vector and then we put it into the encryption method with our key and then what we do is we take that as our first cipher block and then we feed that cipher block into the next block again exclusive OR with the second block of plain text and that gives us our second cipher block you can see the problem that we have, this is taken from Wikipedia. So the problem that we have with alternate codebook is that the same content, in this case the white uh, blocks of white pixels, come out the exact same. You can see it's happening in here too. And we can actually still see the penguin there, even though we're using AES. And that's because we're using alternate uh, codebook. If we use cipher block chaining, we see here it looks like noise. Okay, so here's an example. Let's look at DES as an example. So here is our text, and it's just a whole lot of E uh, ASCII values. Because we're using 64 bits, uh, and each of these is 8 bits, we have 8 characters which will go into each of the blocks. Okay, that goes in there. And then what we do is that uh, we'll take a passphrase, in this case, but one, two, three, four, five, and then we'll put that into our encrypted block. And the output is this. Okay. And then you can see here, because we're using the same plain text input, then we get the same output here. So if we look at this, there is the first block with the E's. There's the second one, third one, fourth, fifth. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then this one here is what we see at the end. And that's obviously for the, the padding at the, at the end. Okay, because it doesn't quite fit into the last block we need to pad for certain values. Okay, so if we have a look at this, this is the web page here. So what we're going to have to do is to have a look at all these and build one, two, three, four, five there. Give that a try. And there's what we get. Okay, so you can see here, there's the first block of ease. There's this, the second one was around there. Here and, and so on. Okay, and there's the decrypted value here. We can try the quick brown fox here with the ECB. So there's what we get there for our for the for this key here.
OK, so you can see that we get repeated blocks. So that's not really very good because somebody could just copy and paste that now without actually knowing what the key is. OK, so cipher block chaining looks like this. OK. Another method that we can use is what's called the cipher feedback or CFB. So with this, we take the initialization vector and then we encrypt with the key. Then what we do is we exclusive or it with the first block and that becomes our first cipher block. We then take that output, feed it into the next stage and then encrypt with the key again and then exclusive or that output with the second block and we get the second cipher text. Okay, so that's cipher feedback. Okay, and there's the there's the method here. Another method we can use is output feedback. With output feedback, we take the output just before the exclusive or, and we feed that into the next stage like that. Into there. Okay, and then we get our output there. And then this output here goes on to the next stage there. Okay, so that's output feedback. Uh, this is cipher feedback. Okay, so that's been a, a quick introduction to the different methods. We'll just have a quick look at our methods here. So you should find that this web page actually has some examples. So here is uh, the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. A typical test vector because it has all the letters in it. So if we go for cipher our cipher block chaining and that's what we get so now we'll try a different initialization vector and you see it completely changes the the out, the output okay so there we go and so on Okay, so the initialization vector is, is important because it adds a little bit of salt to the to the actual cipher. Okay, so that's been a, a very basic introduction to some of the main methods we use for cryptography.